due to having a better offensive supporting cast heading into his rookie season. Caleb Williams, quarterback for the Chicago Bears, can repeat the success we saw from C.J. Stroud in 2023. We're going to talk about this and more coming up next. You are Locked On NFL Draft, your daily podcast covering the NFL Draft. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to the Locked On NFL Draft Podcast, your daily podcast covering your favorite draft prospects. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Damian Parson, Senior Draft Analyst. And guys, thank you for making Locked On NFL Draft your first listen today and every day. Shout out for being our everydayers. Guys, we have a fun show to break down. Caleb Williams being able to repeat C.J. Stroud's success. I'm going to get into that. The projection of Jaden Daniels. What's the best case scenario? What's the worst case scenario? And to sit or not to sit, rookie quarterback for the New England Patriots, Drake May. We're going to get into all of that coming up next, guys. But first, today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 with any winning $5 bet. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. Guys, Caleb Williams, rookie quarterback, first overall pick, can repeat the success that we saw from C.J. Stroud. Yes, the offensive rookie of the year, record-breaking, that, that elite performance that we saw from C.J. Stroud in 2023. I believe we can see a very similar season from Caleb Williams. Now, let's put some things into perspective. Let's set the floor here. C.J. Stroud, as a rookie, uh, completed 64% of his passes through 41, uh, 4,108 uh, yards passing. That was all in the regular season, by the way. 8.2 yards per attempt. 23 touchdowns, five interceptions. Also made it to the second round of the uh, NFL playoffs where he lost to the Baltimore Ravens. And here's the thing. Caleb Williams, as I said in the opening, he's walking into a better situation than C.J. Stroud. Let me, fin- let, let me, let me expound on that. When C.J. Stroud was selected, remember, after that, right, the very next pick, they got on the phone. They were already on the phone with Car- with the Cardinals, right, Arizona. They made the trade for Will Anderson Jr., moved up from, like, what, 10 or 11 to 3. Right. And Arizona coming into the season, into the summer, all the way too early 2025, 2024 mock drafts. I'm sorry. All the way too early 2024 mock drafts said what? And had what? Vegas betting odds had what? The Arizona Cardinals selecting first overall Caleb Williams with the Houston Texans pick. And the discussion for most of the 2023 season, uh, uh, like I think halfway point, right? Because the, the Texans were. The Texans were like four and four, like the at week uh, nine, I think it was. And there was a lot of discussion. Remember, guys, there was a lot of discussion about, well, should the Cardinals just sit Kyler Murray, trade him in the offseason, and select Caleb Williams and just start over? Eat that heavy, heavy, heavy cap that you're going to eat, that you're going to have to eat for trading Kyler uh, right after the season. But nonetheless, that was the discussion, right? Well, there's a reason for that because no one believed in Nico Collins. People did not believe in Tank Dell. Tank Dell was uh, a size outlier in terms of his frame and his body type, right? He was 165, 170, whatever he was. No one believed that he could like actually play outside receiver in the NFL. Nico Collins' uh, production profile was not robust. It was Dalton Schultz as a tight end was a jag just a guy to a lot of people. Damian Pierce was the one bright spot coming off a strong rookie campaign. People didn't believe in the offensive line as much, nor the defense. Was Derek Stingley ever going to return back to the freshman LSU version of himself, right? Well, you fast forward, and now everybody's like, man, I really believe. I, look, look at all the weapons C.J. Stroud had. No, like we didn't believe that that was going to happen. We thought that the Arizona Cardinals was going to pick first overall with that team, with the Houston Texans first overall, or with the Houston Texans pick that they traded them with moving up to the third pick in 2023. Now, let's go over to Caleb Williams. What is Caleb Williams walking into? Now, I can tell you right now, I'm on record on this pod saying, telling Keith, I think that the Houston Texans are going to be better than people expect. Did I, did I say – that, he, that they were going to be in the playoffs. I didn't say that. I said they were going to be better than everyone expected. I didn't think they were the worst team in the NFL. But let, let's continue. I believed in Tank Dell as well. So I believed in some parts of this offensive line, and I heavily believed in C.J. Stroud. He was my QB1. We talked about it on this pod. But let's fast forward to Caleb Williams, right? 
Caleb Williams is walking into an offense where you talk about Taylor the tape, you know, they do in boxing. They put each boxer up and they go through the, their, their, their traits and their height, weight, size, reach and arm length and all that good stuff. And who, and they check the box of who owns that, that category. Well, tight end, I give it to the bears. Cole commits better than Dalton Schultz. Dalton Schultz is solid, but Cole commits, Cole commit is a better tight end. Now, you're walking in with two proven wide receiver ones, right? Your own team's wide receiver one from last year, DJ Moore, who was also the wide receiver one in Carolina for some time before they stupidly made that trade to move up for Bryce Young and sent away their best offensive player, right, after trading CMC. So DJ Moore was your number one wide receiver last year. You go and get the Los Angeles Chargers wide receiver one last year and over time, Keenan Allen. So now you got two wide receiver ones. Then with the ninth overall pick, you, you add and draft Rome Adunze, a prototypical X receiver. So Caleb Williams breaks the huddle in 11 personnel, and let's paint the picture. At X, running out to X is Rome Adunze. Running out to the Z spot is going to be DJ. It, truthfully, it could be DJ Moore or Keenan Allen. But let's say for this exercise, it is DJ Moore. In the slot, it is, it is Keenan Allen, and you still have uh, Cole Komet at tight end. Let's not forget about who's going to flank him in the backfield or if it's shotgun, who's going to be flanking to him is right to his right or his left. DeAndre Swift, who was a baller for the Philadelphia Eagles last year, right? After they let go of Miles Sanders, they brought in and traded for it during the draft. They traded for DeAndre Swift, who was a absolute baller for them. So you talk about a better situation, run game better, receiving options better, right? And I would say that defense that the Chicago Bears have, Walking into 2024 was better than what the Texans had walking into 2023. So all things, the big thing, the big thing here is Shane Waldron, the Seattle Seahawks offensive coordinator. Mind you, we've seen him, uh, I think, with Russell Wilson. We've seen him with um, Geno Smith. He's going to be a, I think, I trust him to get plays designed and concepts going and to get the run game going and also help Caleb Williams Get his footing early in games. And I do, I truly believe, remember, going week nine, four and four. I think it was the Cincinnati Bengals game that turned the tide and turned the season for the Houston, Texas. So I'm not, don't come back to me in week eight. And, and, and if the Bears are just three and four, you know what I mean? And then the, I don't want to hear that. Or week nine and they're four and four. I don't want to hear that because remember the Texans were too. They didn't, they did not come out of the, out of the they did not walk out of the gates as game busters. Matter of fact, Anthony Richardson beat C.J. Stroud technically because he started that game and he had a big lead on the ball and he got, you know, got a little lazy on, on the celebration and got pushed late after he ran the touchdown and fell, you know, fell in the back of his head and got a concussion, right? He had like two, two or three touchdowns already in that game, if I remember correctly. They were, they were, they had full control. So my point is this, guys. I believe my statement still remains the same. The, 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 the tail of the tape, what, what Caleb Williams is walking into, better defense, a team that can run the ball effectively as well, multiple weapons, where I always say this, I want, I want a quarterback that has the traits of Superman or Black Panther, right, T'Challa, let's talk about it like that. I want you to have the traits of the Black Panther, right, when you put the suit on. Sometimes I just want you to be the king of the team and delegate to other people. And when you have a team like the Chicago Bears, you can delegate, okay? You can delegate. Caleb Williams can beat T'Challa without putting on the suit. He can sit on the throne and he can just delegate. Get it to his guys. Get it to his guys. Hey, take care of this. Take care of that. Drop this. Go drop this over there. Go do this. Go do that. You can go and handle business. But there will be games where along with those pieces and, 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 and your guys with you, right? Your guys that's ready for war. Caleb Williams can still become Black Panther. Put the suit on and be a superhero and save the day. Right now, when you put these two quarterbacks up, as I get ready to close this segment, I, with with these two quarterbacks, if you ask me who was the better passer and thrower coming out of college, easily C.J. Stroud. Ball placement, accuracy. I, I kept saying he is a Hall of Fame pitcher at quarterback. He has multiple arm angles. He has speed control. He can throw a fastball. He can throw a slider. He can throw a changeup, screwball, whatever it is. At, uh, the arc down the field, he can change the trajectory or pa trajectory of passes. He was just a more natural thrower, a true passer, a pure passer. Where we know Caleb Williams is going to dominate in this matchup in terms of his ability to be that base stealer, right? And he could be the home run hitter, 
but he can also steal the bases because he's got that athleticism where if you don't corral him, he's not going to just get first. He's not going to just get a hit and get the first. He's going to steal second, steal third, and make it home. You know, he's he's that electric with his legs. So for me, man, I think Caleb Williams absolutely can replicate and repeat the success that we saw from C.J. Stroud. Is it a, a, a tall task? Yes. But the offensive supporting cast for Caleb Williams gives me enough it absolutely gives me enough confidence and his skill set does as well, guys. So listen, that's Caleb Williams repeating success for CJ Stroud heading into 2024. Let's get into the second overall pick from the 2024 NFL draft, Jaden Daniels. Let's talk about his projection. Is he similar to a former Big 12 Heisman winning quarterback that played for the same team? Mm, we'll you'll find out coming up next on the Locked On NFL Draft Podcast. Passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your number one ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and so much more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one Ride or die, you'll always, and guys, I mean, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride the first time, every time, or you get your money back. Why? Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber and not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your number one rider die alive at ebaymotors.com. Keep your number one rider die alive at ebaymotors.com. Second overall pick in the 2024 NFL draft class, quarterback out of LSU, Heisman winning quarterback, Jaden Daniels. His projection, guys, I think as a rookie, you know, and that's more so what I'm talking about, rookie season, right? For him, I think with his overall skill set, I want to see some Robert Griffin III. Okay, I'm, I'm going to just put it out there. I want to see a Robert Griffin III type of season where when you think back to an RG3, that, that rookie of the year season, right? And that, if I remember correctly, that was the year also with what Andrew Luck in that class and everything. That rookie year, 2012, 22 years old, Robert Griffin III led his team to a 96 record, made the playoffs. Right, sixty-five well, sixty-six percent completion percentage, passing completion, passing completion percentage, thirty-two hundred passing yards, twenty touchdowns to five interceptions. He averaged eight yards per attempt, and then when you flip over to the run game, one hundred and twenty attempts, eight hundred and fifteen rush yards, seven touchdowns on the ground. He accounted for forty-five first downs. You know, and, and as a passer, he accounted for 151, right? And, and this, this, this guy, that was such a amazing rookie campaign from him. Where you think about the shotgun, the pistol, with Kyle Shanahan and Mike Shanahan leading leading the charge, and the the Alfred Morris connection, right? Getting Alfred Morris going, getting him vertical in the um, you know, in the read option, in the read option game. You know what I mean? And, of course, the outstanding run against the Minnesota Vikings where he took it with, like, 75, 80 yards or something like that. And you saw that track stance, that track running running style and form just come come to fruition, right, come to reality. I think when I look at Jaden Daniels, um, now RG3 had much stronger arm, of course, right? He had a, he had a rocket. But the snappiness, the whippiness, the the – the whip that, that that he has of an arm is quick. He has some of the best throwing mechanics in this class, man. Tight rotation, tight throwing motion. It's no wasted movement. It's it's just quick. It snaps. It pops. All of that stuff, right? Just from what you know, he maximizes his arm talent, in my opinion, with his upper body throwing mechanics. And when you have a guy, and I remember someone telling me, you know, uh, you know that if he ran the forty, he would have been in that Brian. Thomas Jr. range. If you remember from the combine, BTJ ran a 4-3-3, that DK Metcalf speed. And we've seen that. We've seen Jaden Daniels run away from Alabama, Florida, Missouri. It didn't matter who he faced. He ran away from them, right? We saw that on tape. 
40, 50, 60 yard runs. He's an outstanding athlete. The best athlete at quarterback in terms of just straight line speed, arguably since Lamar Jackson. And then, of course, you have Anthony Richardson, but that's just a whole different package at 6'5, 6'4, 250, running 4'4, four, 4'3. Four, um, and he ran a 4'38 in training. He just didn't stay on the line when he was running the combine, right? He was swaying back and forth. When I look at Jaden Daniels, man, I, I think with, with Terry McLaurin, bringing in Ben Sanat, we talked about him last week. You know, we, even though we gave the nod to, to Brock Bowers in terms of landing spot situation, I think Ben Sanat is going to be an outstanding rookie and an outstanding tight end for this team. They've longed for that. So you add Jaden Daniels to this. You have you you add you give him Ben Sanat, add Ben Sanat to Jahan Donson, to Brian um, Robinson, um, as well in the backfield. So also Austin Eckler, who can be the pass catcher, change of pace back 100%. You know, so McLaurin, Sanat, you have Jahan Dotson, you have De'Ami Brown. Then, you, of course, you still, and then you add those, you have those two running backs, man. Um, I think this is big. I think this is a big situation. Cliff Kingsbury is used to mobile quarterbacks, athletically gifted quarterbacks. He's been with Patrick Mahomes. He's had Kylo Murray as his NFL um, you know, starting quarterback. We've seen what he's able to he, – he gives his quarterbacks free reign to move and be athletic. Remember the play? I think it was 2022. First game of the season, right? Uh, I think it was 2022. Uh, Tennessee Titans versus the Cardinals. They're on, the Cardinals are on the road. They shellacked the Titans. Remember the play where Kyler Murray's like – he tr- and this is my guy, so – I, and I have a son, so I can say this. He looked like a toddler that stole, took something from, from the parent, and you can't catch him. I'm telling you, if you don't have kids, try catching someone's child, more so like a, a family member or a friend or something. Don't, don't do it to a random person. They're going to call the cops. But what I'm saying is try catching a, a, a toddler that you know, right? Like they take your phone. They take your keys. They take something they shouldn't have. And, and they have the speed of Usain Bolt with the agility of Barry Sanders. It's outstanding. So for me, that's what he looked like. He's spinning in the pocket. He's juking and jiving. He's retreating 15 yards, rolls out, gets his feet set, and throws a dime down the field. Like, So he allows his guys to – and I'm not saying Jaden Daniels is going to do all of that, but he allows his guys to play within themselves. I think Jaden Daniels, like, he could be RG3. You know what I mean? And what we hoped RG3 to be, being healthy. The main thing is – same thing they got RG3. Learn to slide. Don't take those hits. The hits you took in, in the SEC in college, you're not going to last long taking those, man. You're not going to last long, brother. So I think that's the thing. I think projection-wise, if, if you say, well, what if it doesn't reach RG3 level, right? What could he be? I think he could be a – I think he could be Geno Smith. Not You know what I'm saying? Like kind of ups and downs version of Geno Smith, right? Not, not the – 2022 version more 2023 stuff like that i think you are you 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 see the, the outstanding talent then you see some okay we got to work on that right and he because he's a rookie so you're going to get that but i do think that the floor is he's got a good floor i think he's got a good a high ceiling too where he could be a absolute game changer for an offense for this washington commander's offense again man like i said i remember pierre garçon and that connection with rg3 um, I was at Aldrick Robinson. I swear it was almost every time they got inside the 45, close to the 50. Kyle Shanahan, uh, yeah, Kyle Shanahan and Mike Shanahan dialed up a deep post off of the RPO, the read option type of action where they, they held the mesh point. RG3 dropped back and uncorked the bomb to Aldrick Robinson down the field. I remember that one against Dallas because I think Dallas had the blue and white with the, um, the kind of throwback for jerseys i think those are the ones that usually wear on thank thanksgiving so yeah man i'm guys i'm telling you that like i remember that so you think about brian robinson and then then austin eckler getting that inside zone game going getting that power game going holding that backside in because you got to read the mesh point the rpo game to hold it hold the mesh point and then snap it and throw it throw that slant to terry mclaurin and um and things like that man i, I just i look at this situation and I feel I feel good about it, guys. I feel good about it. And also, the reason why for me too is because of the fact that Jaden Daniels is good from a fundamental and technical standpoint as a thrower, footwork, upper body mechanics. His body is typically in sync, synchronized, uh, married, and paired together. Right? It's not like having Apple. Uh, you 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 like you. I hate to see quarterbacks 
where you their body looks like you're trying to listen to music on two separate Apple AirPods, right? The left and right don't actually go from the same, they're not from the same case. So they're not synchronized. I hate to see that. But yeah, when I look at when I look at Jaden Daniels, oh yeah, he's the Apple, he, he's the AirPods that come out the same case. Everything's mirrored, mirrored and paired together. And I just think his accuracy down the field to these guys, to this, to, to the talent that they have. Can we get a resurgence of Deami Brown? Can we see North Carolina's Deami Brown again? I think we can with a guy that throws such a catchable, beautiful, and accurate deep ball like a Jaden Daniels guy. So that's what I think about. I think, like I said, you get some Geno, you get a Geno Smith, like in, some inconsistent, you know, uh, Geno Smith is a rookie or just, I mean, like you get Geno Smith, but you put him in rookie form and with Jaden Daniels in terms of, you know, you're going to deal with some ups and downs, some peaks and valleys. But nonetheless, man, I think RG3, that's where I would love to see him. I think you can get Geno Smith out of him as a rookie and then watch him take the next steps, watch him develop and become um, the baller and game changer that the Washington Commanders need him to be. But, guys, coming up next, we're going to close this thing out with to sit or not to sit. Shakespeare this thing with Drake May, quarterback for the New England Patriots. All of this and more coming up next. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel, America's number one sports book. It's winner take all time in the NBA and NHL. And FanDuel's giving you a shot to bring home a big win of your own. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. Right now, guys, new customers get $150 back in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 to bet on everything from spreads to money lines to player props and so much more. So absolutely, this is a deal you do not want to miss. Right. So what do you need to do? You ask. Simple. I'm going to tell you. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make every playoff shot count, guys. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make every playoff shot count because FanDuel is America's number one sports book. Thank you for making Locked On NFL Draft your first listen today and every day. Shout out for being our everydayers. The question, guys, for the New England Patriots, Shakespeare, to sit or not to sit? Quarterback out of North Carolina, their rookie quarterback, hopefully franchise saver, Drake May. When you when you draft him, third, typically when you draft a quarterback third overall in, in the entire draft, he's the third pick in the draft in round one, fans are going to clamor. Fans are going to want. Fans are going to cry for him to be the starter at some point. But that's the key. Where is the starting point? I think you sit him for at least half the season, mainly because they don't have a they don't have a designated left tackle. They draft, they they reach for Caden Wallace, Penn State tackle who played right tackle. Okay, you reach for him, right? And where you could have tried to keep Trent Brown and play Trent Brown on the left, have Michael Winnehue on the right. You could have you could have done a lot of different things, in my honest opinion. But they didn't do those things. They went with Caden Wallace. So if that, you know what I mean? They have uh, Chuma Udoga, I think is his name. Um, I think that's who their tackle is. The other, the actual uh, guy that might be starting at left tackle, he's a veteran, has more, more experience than Caden Wallace. But I think you allow the off one, you allow the offensive line situation to mesh and figure itself out. Allow those guys to gel, okay? And by allowing them to gel, you, you eliminate uh, any type of, concerns or issues by week 9, 10, 11, whatever. Um, and <clears throat> especially if you have, we don't know this, we don't know the schedule yet that comes out this Thursday, but if if you have a post week nine um bye week, that's when you really want to start, right? Or post week eight, right? Where you know, okay, we got we get two weeks to get them prepared, stuff like that. But I say you you allowed Jacoby Brissett, who if you remember at 31 years old in 2023, he came in and played three games for the Washington Commanders. He was 18 to 23, 78% completion, 224 yards, three touchdowns, 13 yards per attempt, and he accounted for 10 uh first downs. So he was effective. And 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 you know, he came in for Sam Howell and you know and everything and, and he looked good. Why? Because Jacoby Brissett can still play winning football. Okay. And he has that that connection with Alex Van Pelt uh from their both of their times in 2022 with the Cleveland Browns. So while Alex Van Pelt is, 
and as the as the offensive coordinator and, the, and he has his uh, QB coach, they're working with Drake May in the shadows, off to the side, off the field, behind the scenes, working on mechanics and getting everything ironed out. Drake May can learn holding the clipboard what it's like to be a pro. Because that's the main thing, guys. Like As much as we talk about like prospects going to the league and tearing it up, no matter how talented you are, you're talented and you're a big fish in the smaller of the two ponds in college football. When you get to the league, then you have to learn how to be a pro first, right? Because when you learn how to be a pro, how to execute being a pro, how to lead by example, how to be able to connect with different guys, talk to different guys in the locker room, you know, motivate your guys, especially as a quarterback, whenever you need to step up and speak, that's when those things matter, man. Like, and, and then the, the, cause then that removes that awkwardness. It removes that, that mental uh, hurdle for the, for the quarterback, for the player period to where now they're comfortable. They can be themselves. They are themselves. And then they allow themselves to just play ball. They're not saying they're not in the back of their mind. Like, man, I'm trying to win the respect of these guys. I'm not trying to mess up in the huddle and say the wrong thing. And you know, blah, blah, blah. I'm not trying to I run my route incorrectly. I'm not trying to miss this block. No, you, you, those things are things you don't want to do anyway. But when you're, you know, when you already, you feel like a pro and you're seven, you know what I mean? And, and, and you're as well into the, your rookie season, those thoughts don't have to happen nearly as much. You're just playing ball at, at, at that point. And I think, again, the post bye week, if it's like middle of the season to into that back end stretch, I think that's the situation. Allow Jacoby Brissett to go out there. And I think also you go out there and you let Jacoby. I, and not, this, is my, this is my honest opinion. Jacoby Brissett goes out there. I would like the two young guys to get as much reps with him and get as much reps against NFL defenses as possible. Because then when I do put uh, Drake May in, you know what I don't want to do? Put him in with receivers, with rookie receivers, who you hope to be the future with him over the next three to seven, three to five years or whatever time frame it is. You don't want them all starting at the same time and, and going through jitters and you know, no, you want if the receivers have been playing for 10 weeks and now Drake May comes in, he's like, big big dog, we got you. All right. Th those are his guys, those are his rookie mates, his, his draft mates, his classmates. They can say, We got you, big fella. What, you know what I mean? We're gonna be where you where you need us to be, different things like that. And they can have that communication. And now he's talking to somebody on his NFL in terms of experience level, but those guys have been playing for weeks, so they are comfortable and they can help him get more comfortable, right? To where he's trusting them because he's seeing them be there for Jacoby Brissett. So that's kind of the way I think about it in terms of to sit or to not to sit. Yes, you want to see Drake May play this year. He's going to play this year. But for the most part, at least half the season, I want Jacoby Brissett to play. But my caveat is play Javon Baker and, and, and play Jalen Polk. If these guys showcase themselves well in rookie minicamp, OTAs, and then training camp, get them on the field early and often with Jacoby Brissett. Let them get their feet wet, get themselves grounded. And then when you put in their quarterback, your franchise, potential franchise quarterback, your third, your first pick in the 2024 NFL draft, the third pick overall, Drake May, when he steps in, he's got some familiar faces that came into this class with him and guys that he well, that he's seen go and do it as rookies. And that gives him a more of a, a boost of a confidence as well, guys. But that's our conversation. That's our show today. Talking about sitting or to, to sit or not to sit Shakespeare, to sit or not to sit Drake May, quarterback for North, for North Carolina for the New England Patriots, to talk about Jaden Daniels, the projection, RG3, Geno Smith. What, what, do we, what can we get from Dennis Dixon? Dear God, no. We don't want that, right, from the Pittsburgh Steelers because they didn't use him correctly. But the point is, like, we, we want to find that balance between that and that spectrum and then that range. And, of course, Caleb Williams can repeat C.J. Stroud's rookie-breaking offensive rookie of the year success from 2023, heading into his 2024 uh, rookie season because of the team and the offensive supporting cast he has. It is greater than what we initially felt like uh, C.J. Stroud was walking into, guys. But thank you so much for joining us here on the Locked on NFL Draft Podcast. Go subscribe and follow for free on YouTube, wherever you listen to podcasts, to get the latest episode as soon as it is available. Thank you for making Locked on NFL Draft your first listen today and every day. Shout out for being our everydayers. And come and join the conversation again tomorrow on Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day.